Hello, my name is Brenda Lyons. I am the author of Winged Fantasy, Draw and Paint Magical and Mythical Creatures from Impact Books. And I'm here to tell you a little bit about what went into this book and give you um, kind of a chapter by chapter short summary of the book. Now I'm really excited because this is my first book. Um, and I'm very excited that it was through Impact, a, uh, a book publisher that I have quite a few titles from. Um, and I really love their books and the way that they put their books together. So I'm just going to go through uh, chapter by chapter, giving you a, a short summary of each. So introduction, why do we love winged creatures? Um, if you're going to buy this book, obviously that's a question you've probably answered for yourself. But here's a little bit of information about why I think we loved wing, why we love winged creatures kind of as a, a society. Um, so here's materials and techniques. This is primarily a watercolor painting book. There's a little bit of teaching on drawing and ink and graphite, but primarily it is watercolor. You can see a bit uh, about different pigments you can use, how to mix different watercolor colors, uh, difference between cakes and tubes. There's also a section on pencils here. Brushes, papers, and boards. Uh, very, very important. It's very different um, between the papers and boards, the techniques that you're going to get. Different materials, how to transfer your drawing. A lot of people, uh, they create a beautiful drawing in their sketchbook and then they want to know how to transfer it onto watercolor paper. So this explains how to do that. Painting over graphite. And then drawing with ink. A lot of people love using ink. And watercolor is great to use over ink because uh, ink is primarily waterproof and then watercolor you don't have to worry about um, like alcohols or solvents bringing up your ink. So watercolor and ink go very well together. And then this chapter, uh, this is a chapter that a lot of people requested from me, drawing wings. Uh, a lot of people ask me, how do you do bird wings? How do you understand bird anatomy? Uh, this explains that very well in these pages. And I cover both birds and bats because obviously if you're drawing dragons you're going to want to know how to draw bat wings as well as insect wings. Lots of different cool wings, dinosaur wings here. So this is how bat wings move. And then the bird wing section by popular demand. Um, I explain not just wing anatomy but also feather placement, how the feathers attach to the bones and the general bone anatomy for bird wings then different types of bird wings, and then step-by-steps on how to draw each of the wings here. So we're going to go to the dragon section. So dragons of the world from sea to mountain to forest. I tried to cover different types of dragons, uh, dragons and wyverns, um, created a water dragon, and this is just basic anatomy on how to draw basic dragons. And then this is an example of the step-by-steps. I tried to start with the, the, water, the uh, drawing and then go um, slowly step-by-step step showing my, my steps of uh, washes and then details. So I'm hopefully, hopefully these are very easy to follow. Um, I do use a lot of colors, uh, however you can use as many colors or as few colors as you want. Uh, the important thing is your value um, getting your crisp details in here. And for white, you always want to leave the paper, the white of the paper. If you go back with wash or white acrylic, it's never going to look quite as crisp. And then we have different dragons here, a forest dragon, we have a gold dragon, and then chapter four is equines. Um, we have different pegasi here, we have unicorns, unicorns with wings, uh, different names for those. So I start off with a little bit of equine anatomy here, and then we go in with the step-by-steps. And then we have a, an arctic unicorn here, teaching you how to paint white. And then we have the zebra unicorn, which seems to be really popular with a lot of people. Whenever I show them this piece, they say, ooh, it's a zebra. Then we go on to our winged animals. Now a little bit about this section. Um, a lot of people think, well, it's just animals with wings, but I try to explain here that it's not just animals with wings, it's, um, you know, what's the story behind the animal? Why does the animal have wings? I mean, anybody can just, you know, slap a pair of wings on a dog, but what is his story? And here I tried to explain, you know, we have this, this dog here who got caught stealing the queen's treats, and, you know, you have a bunch of cats here who are all too proud to have caught this mangy dog. And a funny, funny little story here, um, or not so much funny, but a little bit of a nod to a, uh, a cat that I once had. 
Um, I, I lovingly, lovingly called him Stolen Cat, and this is him here. Um, he was a, a gray cat. He didn't have a tail. And um, I call him Stolen Cat because I, I jokingly say that I stole him from my neighbors, but uh, we both shared him. They knew that I had him. And he, uh, he was a beloved cat in this household. Sadly, he passed away in October. Um, and there's another little nod to another cat here whose name was Butler, and he sadly passed away as well. So two cats are kind of immortalized in my book, two cats that I loved a lot. So in here I explain a little bit of feline and canine anatomy. Um, some of the step-by-steps cover wolves, and then another one covers a winged cat. And then different animals, such as deer, flying pigs. This is actually my favorite here, this, this flying, fierce little mouse. Then chapter six is griffins, phoenixes. Uh, we have a raven here. Our ravens are always kind of a fantasy theme. Uh, we have bird heads and tails. This is Raven the Trickster. Um, I tried to explore a lot of different legends and uh, myths from all around the world. So this would be uh, Pacific Northwest in the United States. The Thunderbird, another um, North American legend. And we have the Phoenix, which is found all the way from the Far East to uh, for all, all, all across the globe, um, Middle East, <clears throat> there have even been um, contemporary phoenix legends as well. Um, and this is my, my take on it. I like to have kind of a, a, a heron neck with my phoenixes. Sometimes I'll make them more like hawks. And then we even have, um, I believe on the back here, we have our little songbird phoenix. So... Lots of different ways to do phoenixes. It doesn't have to just be made of fire. It doesn't have to just be a beautiful bird. Um, there are lots of different ways of portraying your phoenixes. And our hippogriff. I've seen a hip hippogriffs in certain uh, contemporary literature and movies. And then, of course, this book wouldn't be complete without a griffin. One of my favorites. And a little section on avian jewelry. Um, I love to put jewels and all sorts of things on my, my griffins and hippogriffs and phoenixes and birds, so I figured I'd put a section in here about that. And that is it for this preview. If you're interested in picking up a copy of this, you can get it either on Amazon. Um, it should be available in Barnes & Noble, um, certain art and craft stores. You can also get it online direct from uh, Impact. If you go on their website, you should be able to buy it from them. And I should also have copies with me at conventions such as Dragon Con, Anthrocon, and Fropocalypse. So thank you for looking, and if you have any questions, feel free to ask either through email, um, or you can comment here on my YouTube page.